I did you see something? something? I thought I heard something. Oh my god, no, I'm no, sorry. That looked what like blood. <laughs> I got a very sharp headache the moment I said that. You hear the cries in this? Yeah, what happened That's to them all of a sudden? That's insane. Oh! There's something there. Oh my god. Turn the light off. Welcome to Boothbusters, a show where I, Aryan, and I, Ishwarya, venture into some of India's most haunted locations to find evidence for ghosts or bust the booth once and for all. This week, we head to one of Delhi's most haunted buildings, a 700-year-old abandoned hunting lodge hidden under the canopy of a dense green forest in the middle of India's capital. Welcome to Malcha Mahal. All right, Ishwarya, here we are at good old Malcha, Malcha Mehal, Mehal. Yes. Where the last of the Mughals lived. Um, it's deep into the forest, so we finally In the middle of it. nowhere, yeah. Yeah. I don't think most people know that this forest exists in the middle of Delhi. I would wager a majority don't know that this exists here. There's like monkeys and jackals and all sorts of wildlife. That's a beautiful building. Ashra, the ghosts at Malcha Mahal are very unique. You know, mm. these aren't your run-of-the-mill average Joe ghosts. You know, not a dead postman or a dead firefighter. Right. These are royal ghosts. In fact, these royal ghosts are probably the last kin of the Mughals. Oh wow, I don't think I've ever actually heard of royal ghosts. Usually it's always the mm -hmm. lowly commoner who's revolting <laughs> against yeah. the aristocracy that's now a spirit and coming back to haunt everyone. But that's really interesting. The other facet of diversity about the ghosts at Malcha Mahal is they date from all generations. Right? Usually ghosts in a place are, you know, uh, stuck to a certain time period. Ghosts from 1904, ghosts from this certain time period. But the case with Malcha is such that the ghosts are from as recent as 2017, dating all the way back to 1857. So there are generations of ghosts here. Again, I don't think I've ever heard of a ghost from 2017. So these are unique ghosts in every sense of the word. The Malcha Mahal was built as a hunting lodge in AD 1325 by a Mughal Sultan named Firo Shah Tughlaq. This area of Delhi was a vast jungle with deers and tigers roaming the stretches unperturbed. The story goes that on one of his hunts, a favourite pastime of the rulers, Firo Shah got lost, only to be rescued and shown the way by a tribal gypsy woman. As a gift to her, he built this splendid palace. Its name, Malcha, comes from the abundance of deer in this area. It looks enchantingly beautiful, but... Ishra, also... don't forget, this is 800 years old. I know. You know, these bricks are 800 years old and here, it's here in the middle of Delhi, in a forest. It's almost as in the middle of nowhere. It's a little bit like our royals. Yeah. In that it must have been beautiful once upon a time. It's kind of old and run down, still yeah. beautiful now, but not what it once was. I mean, if you look around, it yeah. gives the sort of Vipassana retreat kind of vibe. Like yeah, Jack kind of Dorsey retreats, from Twitter yeah. would be yeah. here, spending a week, cooling off, preventing burnout. What would a day in the life of someone who just lives here be like? Yeah, not much of a life, I no, not say that much. much yeah. Rulers came and went, the Sultanate of Delhi passed hands, but the palace stood as a remnant of the Tughlaq dynasty. Centuries went by and the sandstone structure was bereft of people, or even spirits, until 1857, when the Great Sepoy Mutiny took place against the British colonizers. Several villagers from Malcha joined the rebellion. Despite initial gains, the Indian soldiers were on the back foot once the East India Company consolidated control in Delhi. Malcha Mahal then became a hiding spot for these sepoys who were eventually massacred in large numbers in this area. The ghosts of these martyrs are said to still roam the forests of Delhi, seeking revenge from their British masters. But the British suppression didn't end there. 
Half a century later, in 1911, the British concocted the Land Acquisition Act to usurp this territory from the local Malcha villagers. They wanted to develop this area for horse riding. But to these locals, this was their livelihood. They depended on the forest for sustenance, not leisurely cocktails and polo atop horses. It was a matter of life and death, and so they protested. Their cries were met with the whip, and over 30 Malcha villagers were killed in order to procure this land. Malcha Mehel became a testament of its forgotten inhabitants and the suffering they underwent at the hands of the British. It appears that from this point forward, the palace was cursed, turning from a hunting lodge to a haunted lodge, only becoming more of a hotspot for demonic activity as the years passed by. This is all Tukluk era and there are bats. Yup, there are bats in here, which is... Where? Everywhere. What the f*** do you think that them. is, Ashwarya? No, I can definitely hear them. Where are they? <laughs> oh, I oh saw my them. Oh my god. No, no, no. If you have no idea, I don't know. <laughs> Don't like bats. Oh my god. F*** dude, I will take a ghost right now with a bat flying in my f face. I... Definitely agree. There's not too many though, you guys. We're sure fine. Yeah. Are you not scared of bats? Like, I'm not I'm I'm feeling emasculated, right? <laughs> There's a bat right there. Oh my god. <laughs> Is someone Ooh. here with us? Make a noise if you're here. Oh, Does someone fuck. still live here? Other than the bats? This is the central dome of the Malcha Mahal, where supernatural activity is often reported. Visitors claim that anklets of a woman can be heard as she walks across the hall. To communicate with the spirits here, we first use the spirit box. The spirit box sweeps across several radio frequencies per second, which can be used by spirits to communicate with the physical world. When we ask the spirits questions, they can manipulate the white noise to answer us. Oh my god, it's where they are. I'm increasing the volume. Is anybody here with us? Is anyone here with us? Once. What was that? Once. Oh my f***ing god, it's where they are. Is anyone here with us? What was that? Once. Oh my f god, it's right there. Is anyone here with us? Once. Oh my f god, it's right there. <laughs> That's some gajrare for you. <laughs> I mean, they were Mughals, right? So it sort of adds up. It's still Kajra. Did I you I see something? something? I thought I heard something. Wait, really? Yeah, I have to remember. Is someone it. here? There's a forest there, so like I could have heard it's a forest, but... Cries of vengeful spirits in the Malcha forest were merely the beginning of sinister activity. The lodge lay abandoned in the 20th century with temporary inhabitants here and there, like in the 1960s, when it became home to an artist's residency. One of the painters who lived there, Shanti Dave, recounts that, quote, Malcha Mahal was beautiful, surrounded by nature, end quote. This was soon about to change when the latest residents of Malcha Mahal arrived. In the early 1970s, commotion ensued on the New Delhi railway station. Trains from all over India brought people from all stratas of society to the nation's capital. But it was one particular train from Lucknow that brought on it a family shrouded in mystery and suspense that would forever change Delhi. A tall woman with high cheekbones draped in a royal silk sari disembarked from the train with her two kids, 11 hound dogs and a barrage of servants. This was the Queen of Awadh, the erstwhile Mughal kingdom that now makes up the state of Uttar Pradesh. 
This was Queen Wilayath Begum of Awadh. She might have left the train, but she didn't leave the train station, not for 10 whole years. She headed straight to the VIP lounge of the station with her Nepali servants dressed as ornate royal helpers carrying the expensive china and cutlery to stage a sit-in protest. Begum Vilayat or Queen Vilayat accused the British and Indian governments of robbing her family of their riches and insisted that by royal decree, she deserves to have a palace in Lucknow returned to her. Delhi was in pandemonium. When Indian journalists approached her, she refused to even talk to them, not considering them her equal. She only talked to foreign journalists, who remarked on the pitiful sight of a woman that was once a queen. A New York Times headline read, quote, India princess reigns in rail station, end quote. Begum Vilayat claimed that she was a direct descendant of Wajid Ali Shah, who was the beloved emperor of Awadh before the British annexed it. She insisted that her kids, Prince Cyrus Ali Raza and Princess Sakina, were rightful heirs of Awadhi properties across India. But as stupendous as her claims were, equally stupendous was her demeanour. For example, she demanded her kids address her as Your Highness. An observer commented, quote, the children were more obedient than the dogs. They were absolutely under her control." End quote. There was something haunting about her manners. Like, she only got her pictures clicked when the moon was waning. She only communicated via embossed letters delivered to her on a silver plate by her servants. Ishwara, one of my favourite accounts of this power-hungry queen yeah. is that she would not accept those embossed messages okay. unless her servants delivered it to her by crawling on their knees, as she wouldn't read the read anybody's communications with her. You know, sometimes you hear of ghosts of little tiny girls and you're like, oh, how scary could they yeah. possibly be, you know? She sounds like an insufferable ghost if she yeah. were to be She one. sounds like a demon. Yeah, alive, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm more scared of Aryan's reactions. I'm just scared of bats and like critters and shit. I'm not scared of ghosts, I'm a man That's like terrifying. that, you know? We're like bats, kind of. Okay, are we going to the next room? Let's do it. Ladies first. <laughs> okay, oh my god, no, I'm no, sorry. That looked what like blood see? for a second. I'm oh sorry. My. Oh god, Ashura, is that? that no, it's paint. Right? It's 100% paint. Blood doesn't look that red. You know, funny, you know where that red paint comes from? Where? Um, there was an artistic performance here a few years ago. Oh. They were protesting against the government or something, but the point of this, this was, and people got fooled and other ghost hunters have used this as evidence, but it was just part of an artwork. It, yeah. An exhibition it that like was here. Artwork. It's a great place for an exhibition. Oh my, there's a bad hang. Oh my. Where is it? I should have right f***ing there. Oh. oh my. Okay, okay. Aryan, right, right. piss the bad off. I pissed my pants. I don't know the bad. Okay, Ashwara. Okay, there's more blood here. Ashwara. More blood writing. Yeah, well. Keshav. No, no, no. Begum Vilayat. <laughs> she was hella toxic. Quote. A quote from Begum Vilayat herself. Ashwara. Oh my god. I mean, we will go up Holy eventually. Crap. Ashwara, do you want to bring out the Magla? I want to ask some questions. Because yeah. clearly, like, Cyrus and Sakina aren't presenting themselves. The bats are more active than demons in this place. Oh my f***, it's here, it's here. The maglite is a torch that can be manipulated to turn on and off without physical contact and used to communicate with the paranormal world. Spirits can answer questions by coming close to the light and switching it on or off. So we are now using the maglite to communicate with the spirits here. Is there yep. any spirit in this mahal? If so, turn the light off. Oh my f***ing god. What the f***ing god? Okay. Oh my f***ing god. If you don't want us here, turn the slide off. Yep, okay, don't. okay. I'm gonna take that as a positive sign. Yeah. If we have any spirits here from the British era, can you turn the lights off? Spirits from the Mughal era, can you turn the light off? Spirits, period. Turn the light off. Okay. Oh my f god. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, like, we're. 
like we, we've established there there is a there spirit. is someone somebody here, here uh, tugluk the the king himself I mean, oh my you heard that i did the the king himself I mean, oh my you heard that the the king himself I mean, oh my. the king himself I mean, oh my. i did was that a bat no no it was a well, it was like a clunk i just assumed it was a bat no it was like a metal clang it was definitely if you made that noise turn the light off i mean they're trying it yes so if, if someone it... else you know made that noise turn the light off All right. Um if you like me and Ashwarya turn the lights on. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 I'll take that. Okay. I'll take that as so a yes. The spirit that likes us that likes to clang. And that lives here. I mean, But we don't know who it is. We don't know who it is. All right. I think we're done with the mag light. I think we have started. Thank you for your answers. We there's really a, appreciate your time. This almost felt like an interview. Here. Okay, there, so we know there's a spirit. There's here. a spirit here. Okay. We have established that. Years had gone by and the regal woman had nothing to her name. She threatened to drink snake venom any time the station master expressed an issue with her. Her disposition evoked strong sentiments not only in the Shia Muslim community in Lucknow but world over. She became a beacon of India's royal past. She was even offered a bungalow in Lucknow by the government but she refused. Only a palace would suffice for the queen. the vip lounge became their temporary residence if you were a commuter on those trains back then you'd be met with a bewildering sight each morning imagine 11 great danes servants fanning three beautiful looking royals who had by now grown thinner their hair disheveled but their splendor and dignity still intact one such commuter was indira gandhi herself the then prime minister of india she took pity at the plight of begum vilayat but how could even the prime minister just find an empty palace in post independence india well little did she know not too far from her own home the prime minister's residence at 7 lok kalyan marg there was an empty palace in what was now known as the central ridge forest of delhi 10 years after establishing her reign on the railway in 1984 Queen Vilayat accepted Indira Gandhi's compromise and moved into the desolate palace with Prince Cyrus, Princess Sakina, hound dogs and an army of servants. Malcha Mahal became the Vilayat Mahal. They never left the palace again. Yes, they looked royal. Yes, Begum Vilayat had a commanding aura. Yes, Cyrus and Sakina were princely. But there was something off about this family. Not only did they go and live in complete isolation without electricity or running water in a forest, they refused to talk to anyone. They put fencing all around the mahal with signs reading "Entry restricted, caution of hound dogs, intruders shall be gunned down." Many reporters crossed the dense forest to catch a glance of this family. Rarely were they successful. Of those that did manage to find the mahal in the forest, many never returned. Some journalists were lost forever. No one knows what happened to them, whether they disappeared, fell prey to the animals, or were murdered. Rumors spread that this isn't any ordinary family. There was something sinister about them. Then when an American journalist finally got access to them in 1997, Princess Sakina, a grown woman herself at this point, revealed a haunting truth. Begum Vilayat of Awadh was no more. In a final protest to the evils of the British and Indian government, she killed herself, and it was no ordinary suicide. Appropriate to her manners, she consumed the drink of silence made of crushed diamonds and pearls to kill herself. All right, hold up. <laughs> so you're telling me that she drank crushed diamonds and pearls yeah. to kill herself? Yeah, and I'm also telling you that when we go to Malcha Mahal. Uh huh. She is buried somewhere there, and there's a good chance diamonds. there are crushed diamonds and pearls to be found. Do crushed diamonds and pearls actually kill you? It's the drink of silence, right? So apparently, apparently they do. That's so yeah. interesting. Or, or, or so she claims. So she claims. So she claims. So she claims. So she claims.
Her kids embalmed her body with their own hands, which still lays buried somewhere in the Mahal. Begum Vilayat's ghost is still seen and heard by locals. Many visitors have reported the sounds of a woman crying and laughing hysterically as her anklets echo aloud. In the same room where a hysterical woman can be heard walking around, we took out our thermal camera hoping to catch an apparition. The FLIR thermal camera lets us see what the naked eye cannot. Invisible heat radiation emitted or reflected by objects and entities. Differences in color on the FLIR camera screen indicate the presence of living or non-living beings. Yes. Uh, should be there. Oh, you see those blobs? Those are all. Something else dropped before the thermal camera, for f**k's sake. I can't let this break, this very expensive. What was that? Something oh, a rock broke. fell, a rock fell. Bro, a rock fell? Yeah, from oh, the wow. top, like something broke. Can you yeah, see that? Yeah, something definitely broke. I yeah, wasn't right like... There. It wasn't the thermal camera, something fell. No, this made Aryan jump and then... And that's batch. Yeah, that just Oh fell. my god. Oh, there's a... I swear that just See something fell like it could be anything but it wasn't the thermal camera that fell when I ran away Despite the abject conditions Sakina and Cyrus continued to live at Malcha Mahal As the years passed by like the Mahal they too fell in ruins the palace was regularly ransacked by burglars. Their servants turned on them and ran away, and their eleven hounds perished one after the other. The Great Danes were replaced by stray dogs, and the royal clothes with tattered shirts. The Delhi government allowed Cyrus a gun license to protect himself and his hermit kingdom. Many from the nearby Israel centre reported that if anyone mistakenly stumbled across Cyrus, he'd point his gun at them and threaten to unleash his dogs. The disappearances of the journalists, the bizarre death of the queen, and the mysterious siblings caused Delhiites to reconsider the royal family's royalty. Rumors spread that they were in fact jinns, demonic spirits according to Islam. These rumors gained further traction when Sakina died in 2015. No one found out about her death for seven whole months until Cyrus confessed to a New York Times journalist. How she died? We don't know. Her remains were never found. Cyrus buried her with his bare hands in Malcha Mahal itself, much like his mother, Begum Vilayat. Her ghost has been reported seen there as well. Now I'm going to tell you something, Ashwarya, um, for which you're probably gonna hate me. Okay. All right. Uh, there's no easy way to say this, but this was all a lie. It, it happened exactly as I told you, except Queen Begum Vilayat of Awadh wasn't a queen. Um, she wasn't named Begum Vilayat, nor was she from Lucknow. She was a scammer. Her real name was Vilayat Butt, and she was a simple Pakistani woman married to a civil servant. There was no Prince Cyrus Ali Raza either. In fact, his real name was Mickey Butt. <laughs> and there was no Princess Sakina either. Her name was okay. Parad Butt. Make of, make Just of that one question. what you want to. Just one question. How does one, with names like those, have diamonds to drink to kill themselves? They probably didn't. Much like the other things they claimed, as we're soon so about to find. So just died with regular rat poison. And I had this image in my mind. Yeah. They weren't royals, Ashwarya. These were commoners. These are ghosts of the postman and the firefighter. These are normal, good old, Plebeian ghosts. And so the New York Times journalists and the really fancy foreign correspondents were all there because they lied. But they lied, Because yeah. they said so. It's because New York Times said these are queens and princes that the world started believing it. That's wild. It's wild. It gets wilder. Is there any demonic entity in this mahal? Begum Vilayat, we know you lived here. 
we know you weren't a Begum. We know your real name was Vilayat Bhatt. We know you fooled the New York Times, yeah. the government of India. You fooled people all around India and made them believe you're a queen when in fact you were just a housewife in Pakistan. And you're terrifying, that's for sure. You're still terrifying. Is your spirit still here? Were you buried here? Give us a sign if you're still here. Begum Vilayat Bhatt. If you're here, give us a sign. Cyrus. Or real name Mickey Bhatt. If you're here, give us a sign. Any sign. Any noise. Kill a bat. Any apparition. A blob, blurb in the video. You want to take out the REM pod here, Ashwara? Yeah, let's do it. The REM pod produces an electromagnetic field around it and detects fluctuations in ambient temperature. When something moves close to the REM pod, it indicates its presence by blinking its four LED lights and beeping. Here is the REM pod. Okay. So if anything appears in its vicinity, Begum Vilayat, if you're here, go close to the REM pod. Cyrus, if you're here, we've given you a way to give us a sign. Give us a sign. Just go close to the REM pod. We're not here to hurt you. If there is any spirit, the spirit that said it is here when we were talking on the Maglite, yep. the clang sound that we heard, if you are here, go near the REM pod. We're just here to talk. Just We're here not to talk. here to hurt you. We know your story. We know your past. We just want to hear it from you. I mean, I didn't think other than that spirit, the Begum Villa doesn't want to come or she doesn't want to be confronted with the fact yep. that now we know who she really was. And the world knows who she really was. Just two lowly okay. podcasters. I'm not going to lie and I'm not making this up. What? I got a very sharp headache the moment I said that. Wait, I swear on my younger brother. Very sharp headache on my right side. I swear on Ivan. Is it gone now? No, it's still there. Like a very sharp headache here. That's scary. I'm not like... I heard something. That's like a... That's a... That's an animal. I swear I had a headache. Yep, that's not this. Those are wolves crying <laughs> in the distance of fox or something. No go. And all of a sudden too, they weren't crying like this before. Yeah. So shoop. Could be, I don't know. That's terrifying. No, I don't like that. Are you okay I would rather now? Yeah, I just it's a weird weird pain. Like it's still here. Was that you? Anyone Begum Villa, do you not like me confronting you? You were Miss Butt. You lived in Lucknow for a while. You went to Kashmir, told people you were Afghan royalty. And now you're giving me a headache. Is that you? Or I have some undiagnosed issue that I need to go to the doctor for. You hear the cries in the... Yeah, what happened that's, to them all of a sudden? That's insane. That's insane. I swear they I felt They started at the headache. exact moment. I swear I felt... It was like, shoop, like the shooting headache that you sometimes have. Just, that's terrible. I was like, should I tell her? Will I sound like one of those other ghost hunters who like... Oh, 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 it was just like a headache. No, no, I... Literally, I think we caught this on camera. That's really scary. Oh, oh my oh, God. Are you getting that? That's really scary. Oh, oh my oh, god. Are you getting that? That's really scary. Oh, oh my are god. Are you getting that? No. No. Oh my god. I don't see anything. I should have goosebumps right now because like that headache and the wolves going like or the foxes or whatever. There are a lot of jackals in this area. Now the headache's gone now. F me.
After the partition, Vilayat's husband fled Lucknow with the family to Islamabad. Their eldest son was in fact a decorated Pakistani air forceman. But Vilayat missed Lucknow. Her relatives in Lahore and Texas, who are still alive, describe her as a haughty and commanding presence. In fact, Vilayat on one occasion slapped the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, for which she was sent to a mental asylum in Lahore for six months. But that didn't cut it. Her ambition for something greater still gnawed at her. Once out of the asylum, she faked her documents and her life story and took her kids with her to Kashmir in India. She pretended to be Afghan royalty but had to ditch ship and move to Lucknow when locals suspected malevolence. In Lucknow, she claimed to be the direct descendant of a Nawab. And it seemed to work for a while, but shortly thereafter, locals identified her as Vilayat Bhatt, who was there in Lucknow before the partition and called her an imposter. Sure enough, being caught red-handed didn't come in the way of her maniacal megalomania. This was a woman hungry for power, who deluded herself and her kids. Next stop, New Delhi Railway Station. We are now, this is our final time in this floor of Malcha Mahal. We have the mag light and the REM pod out. Um, I mean, we did feel something, but it could just be psychosomatic, it could have been anything. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm playing tricks on us. This is the final chance for anybody on the ground floor of this desolated monument. If there's any spirit here, can you go close to the REM pod? Confirm to us, show us that you're here once and for all, so we can leave you alone and never come back here again. I mean, I don't want to make any promises. It's pretty close to where I live, so... Um, you might see Aryan again. Cyrus, if you are here, you were here up until very recently, my guy. Did you even know you weren't royalty? Was it all an act or did you actually believe it? You're the one I was most excited to try and find Cyrus. So, if you're here... He's a good looking guy. Hmm? Really good looking guy. Hmm. Right? I guess, there I guess there's here. no one. Yeah. yeah. For decades, people believed her lies, until 2017 when the last of the self-proclaimed Mughal was found dead in his mahal. The Raja had died, many, in Delhi bemoaned. They didn't know that their beloved Mickey was no Raja. It is only when Ellen Berry from the New York Times tracked down Vilayat's son Shahid Bhatt in Bradford, UK, did the truth come out. Shahid had been sending Cyrus money to sustain himself. Shahid himself was a middle-class Englishman suffering from cancer, trying to make ends meet. When Ellen found him through an address on a Western Union transfer slip, the world found out the truth of the mysterious royals. I know this is a crazy story and that's an understatement. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, you know, I would be more scared to come across the ghosts of these people rather then than the royals. royals. I agree. Because there is just something so scary about this. I mean, she's a delusional, crazy lady, right? Yeah. And I'd be scared of meeting her in person, let alone her ghost in the forest at midnight, as we are about to try and do. I agree. Let's hope we do find her though. But fear wouldn't stop us from meeting the spirits of Begum Vilayat. So I decided to spend some time alone in this building hoping to catch some evidence. I don't know why I volunteered to be left alone. It's completely dark in here. Oh my God, my heart's beating so hard right now. Maybe we have to use the infrared here because it's pitch black. Like you can see lights in the horizon and I'm like there's this little cubicle that's been sealed off. So like this was a pass so it's been sealed off and I'm Stepping in to see what's in here. Oh my god. Is there anybody here with me right now? Yeah, okay. I think I'm scared now. Yeah, I'm scared now because like they've gone. Is there any ghost here with me? Any spirit? Just show yourself to me. I'm all alone right now. There is nobody here. Something gave me a very sharp headache. 
and it could have just been my mind playing tricks on me, which it most likely was. Nonetheless, pretty scary. So much of this is psychosomatic, right? Like you, you're in a scary environment with a scary history, and then. Thought I heard something. Yep, there's something there. Yep, there's something there. Yo, Ashwarya. Yep. I'm back in the room where I got a headache. Oh my God, there's so many bad guys I can't recall. Oh my. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm lost now. Hey, how was dinner? After realizing my team had wandered off with no regard for my safety, I finally reunited with them to continue our investigation. All right, so we're now using a laser in this part of the house. Um, and the point of the laser is for there to be any movement that we can then see through breaks in the mm. laser light. So we'll be able to see any apparition as a projection, as a break in this light here now. So and if there's anyone in this house, go ahead. Walk through the space, make yourself known, show us yourself, give us a sign. We also have an EMF meter at the same time. Yeah. that detects any um, EMF waves, which is what they say apparitions are made of. Um, and at the moment, there is nothing. Um, so make of that what you want to. It's a pretty good EMF meter. The EMF detector is used to pick up on the presence of electromagnetic fields to identify entities that generate high radiation. When the light on the meter beeps and the numbers on its screen begin to change, we know we have stumbled upon something normal or paranormal. Again, for probably the final time in this Bootbuster episode, I am requesting any of the butts, Mickey butt, Farad butt, Vilayat butt, to show themselves, to show us whether you lived here, what it was like living here. Do you miss this place? Because. Somewhere over here, literally Ashwara, they're yeah, buried. Somewhere over here. Um, and the bodies of the three purported princes and princesses is buried here. Yeah. So if spirits are real, there's a good chance they show up right now. You've made us beg a lot. We have begged a lot. People think this place is haunted. If it is, come on, prove them right. Show us this is your space. You don't want anyone else here. You've lived here. This is your home. You know, like, and I feel, I feel bad for dead people, obviously. Of course. Yeah. Yes, natural. But it's also kind of disappointing that they... It's kind of cool also that they fooled the entire populace of a country. Yeah, right? yeah. Fooled sure. journalists from the most reputed publications. And, you know, they died with the palace, but what, what was it worth, you know? Is this a palace? Is this, <laughs> is this even a palace? Is this yeah. even a palace? Right, so the EMF is not doing anything. Neither is the laser. I don't think there's anyone in this room that wants to make themselves known, at the very least. And with that, I think we're done on this floor. We check out the final floor, the, the roof of yeah. Malcha Mahal, which earlier used to be inaccessible because there were there was canopy all over it, trees growing on top. Mm -hmm. But off late, it's been a it's been a point for people. <laughs> she sneezed. Um, God bless that was, me. That was God bless you. God bless us. I need it here. But yeah, we're gonna check out the roof of Malcha Mahal, and I think with that, we will end this investigation. Yeah. Up until now, we've had some. Fairly decent evidence, I would say, but not as much but as not I was. Convincing, not and there is no EMF. Convincing. Like, come on, like, go orange. I don't know. Pee <laughs> pee. All right, let's go upstairs. All right. Could it be the bad shit that gave me a headache, Ashwarya. Highly likely. My hand smells so bad. I feel. Oh. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Okay. Hold on. Let's go in the house. Yeah. Hey, dude. What happened? Bad. This came again. Bro. <laughs> I would. Uh, hmm. Go out. Please don't fly to me. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, mama. <laughs> I'm so confident, guys. Like, I'm not scared of anything. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, my God. What a relief. After that from scary the first bad floor hell, of Malcha Mahal. This is so much nicer. This is the entirety of India's capital. This is Delhi. It is. Oh. I doubt there's any other vantage point in Delhi where you get this All 360 view and a forest. And nobody around you. Nobody around you. It's hard to find those moments in Delhi. In Delhi. Ashwara, this was Malcha Mahal, a yeah. once hunting lodge, now haunted lodge. Turned murder house, turned haunted house. Yeah. Um, Rather peaceful, right? For a place that was haunted. Incredibly you know. so. Yeah, no, I know a lot of people say that about haunted locations that they have kind of a weird vibe to them and any place with murders especially and yeah. so many bats. But this place was actually kind of nice to be in. I think if you set aside that moment where that's shooting headache yeah. and the jackals or whatever animals began and howling. And I think the mag lights. The mag lights. It, yeah. I think there is a spirit that hmm. at least said it was there, um, yeah. though it didn't reveal who or what it was. But up here, away from the bad shit, really away from nice. the bad shit crazy history of this place, <laughs> it's kind of nice, it's kind of peaceful. You, you rarely get these moments in Delhi. Ishwara, it's midnight and we are finally leaving Malcha. What are your final thoughts? Yup. I think it was scary but not terrifying. Uh -huh. Right? And on a scale of Aran, let's say one bad fearsome to ten bad fearsome, <laughs> how scary would you say it was? I would say it was a six. Yeah, I would say it was probably about like a four or a five. Yeah. But nonetheless, a great first stop for Boothbusters first ever episode. Absolutely. Hopefully the next location is scarier. The bigger the better. If you like what we do here at AC Studios and absolutely love what we're wearing today, this is merch you can go buy all for yourself. You can buy this Desi Crime merch in our YouTube store on the link down below at Karak Merch. Keep the engines at Desi Studios rolling so we can pay our videographer right behind the camera to make these amazing episodes just for you.